Thank you so much. I'm super stoked to be here, y'all. My name is Freddie Prince Charming. I am a drag artist out of Phoenix, Arizona. I've been doing drag for almost 20 years, which means that, you know, I started when I was like two. We're just going to go with that. And I've been with Drag Story Hour since 2019. So that's, I mean, that's a, it's a pretty good run. It's one of my favorite things to do. This is actually my third Drag Story Hour in four days, if that gives you any indication of how much I love doing this. Like it, I, anytime I get to, to jump on it, I am, I am all for it. Oh my gosh, Stephanie, I love it. I love the UV. That is fantastic. I, I am so here for it. So here for it. If anybody else has, has costumes or anything and you want to turn your camera on, this is sort of an interactive thing. Like I'm, I, I try to involve, you know, the audience as much as possible, but if not, that's totally okay too. So we're going to do just sort of a quick kind of an icebreaker just to kind of like get folks, you know, I'm sure a lot of folks are probably just getting off work, maybe still at work, kind of sneaking this in the background. I'm here for it. So we're going to do sort of just a, just a kind of a, a, an icebreaker to kind of get folks in the, in the right headspace. All right. So we're going to find your drag name. All right. So what you're going to do first is pick like a title. So Miss, Mrs., Mr., Chief, Chef, Sir, you know, Sir, big, the great, whatever. So find a, find a, find a good sort of honorific there for yourself. And then your first name, what you're going to do is you're going to pick up your a pet you love. It doesn't have to be your pet. If you don't have a pet, pick the name of a snack, your favorite snack. All right. And then a middle initial could be anything. Pick, you have 26 letters to choose from. Pick a good middle initial. And then your last name is going to be the street that you live on. So we've got your honorific. We've got the name of your pet or your favorite snack, your middle initial, and then the street, there you go, that you live on. Now throw those all together and throw them in the chat because I would love to see what folks have come up with. That's always my favorite. Because there's some King Chiquita A. Bellini. <laughs> I feel like I know her. <laughs> I feel like I am her. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. I love it. I love it. Chiquita A. Bellini. I, that is like the perfect drag name right there. Chiquita is my dog. Her full name is Chiquita Banana Company. <laughs> she loves bananas. Is Marzipan D. Ashley? Okay, okay. These are, I, I, we're, we are, I'm, I'm living for it. I'm living for it. It's fantastic. It's great. See, and now if y'all ever decide to do drag, you already have your names. You're good to go. That's like the first thing that's always, you know, <laughs> Cheeto Tea Park. I love Cheeto there. That is oh, that's fantastic. That is actually. great. That is great. All right. Keep keep putting them in putting them in there. I we we'll just we'll just, you know, the majestic Pringles S Everglades. Ah. Excellent. I'm here for it. All right. So I actually have three books that I'm gonna read for y'all today. I the the first one and the third one are Excellent. The second one is really good as well. It's cute. It's fun. And it has more of a sort of a, I guess, a lesson in it than the other two. The other two are just more like, these are great stories. You know, I'm, I'm one of those folks that believes that reading is for everyone. And one of the best things you can do is enjoy a story. And not all stories necessarily have to have, you know, a moral to them or a, a lesson behind them or, or anything like that. Some of those are great. And the ones that, that teach, you know, I do a lot of stories that are about LGBTQ plus history and, you know, the history of pride. And those are amazing. And I love those and they absolutely have their place. But I also love doing just the fun ones that don't necessarily have that full educational value. So two of those will be fun. One of them has, you know, a little more of that, like, 
hey, there's a lesson here for you. So the first one that I'm going to read for you today is called, I Just Ate My Friends. Same. <laughs> it's written by Heidi McKinnon. I just ate my friend. He was a good friend, but now he's gone. See, that's what happens when you eat your friends. You eat your friends and then they're gone. Hello, would you be my friend? No, you are too big. Shame. Hello, will you be my friend? No, you are too small. I mean, it's kind of rude, right? Like, are we really judging our friends based on their size? No. Size doesn't matter, hello. No. Hello, will you be my friend? No, you are too scary. I mean, as far as monsters go, I don't know that he's the scariest monster I've ever seen. But, you know. Hello, would you be my friend? No, you are too slow. He does kind of look like a toe. He does kind of look like a toe. <laughs> Hello, would you be my friend? No. That would be me, just... Stan, this 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 dude right here, this one, this is me. This is me. No. Just no. We're not even gonna discuss it, just no. <laughs> Hello, would you be my <laughs> never mind, goodbye. I think that was we need to work on some people skills there. We need to work on some people skills. What if I never find another friend? Poor little toe monster. Look at him. He's so sad. He's so sad. He's so sad. What if I ate my only friend? That would be unfortunate. Ooh, I will be your friend. Oh, Lucky found a friend. Look at how happy and they're holding hands. I just ate my friend. <laughs> the end. The moral is maybe don't eat your friends. Probably not the best idea. To eat one's friends. I mean, unless unless you have unless they ask, but even then, I think that's frowned upon in many jurisdictions. I feel <laughs> like eating people is probably not the best idea. Let's not do that. Definitely don't want to do that. All right, so. Just to kind of break things up a little bit, we're going to do sort of like a quick, like, I don't know, meet and greet, Q&A. Um, if if y'all have any questions that you'd like to ask, I am a drag king, although technically I call myself a drag artist because really the thing, like lines kind of blur sometimes when it comes to me and, and what I do in my art. But, you know, this is like, this is a good, good chance. If y'all have any questions about me, Drag Story Hour, anything, ask away. I am here for it. And if not, that's fine. We'll just keep going. <laughs> what was your favorite look that you've done so far? Oh, Lord. In the 20 years that I've been doing this, you want me to pick one? <laughs> oh. Okay, top five, <laughs> top five. Top five, I don't have one, I don't have a top five. There's no way, there's no way I could pick a top five. I, my, 
I like to think that my my looks and my skills have really kind of expanded and grown over the years. I've tried to teach myself, you know, new techniques. I like to use a lot of prosthetics and like costume things. And if you go to my Instagram, you'll see why it's very hard for me to pick just one. Actually, I will put my Instagram in oh the ghost face is awesome i will put my instagram in the chat so if y'all want to go you know check me out at some point you'll you'll see why it is it is legitimately impossible for me to pick my top five looks i i do at least one look a week with a weekly webcast that i have and i've like i try to like i say i try to incorporate costuming and you know new makeup techniques and prosthetics and all sorts of stuff so yeah no that's not gonna ah, I wish I could ask me what my top five books are don't have that either actually no I can give you my top five books but yeah Stephanie I am in Phoenix Arizona where the temperatures have finally decided to drop below 100 for the first time since May I think something like that I think we hit our first triple digits in April <laughs> so yeah any other questions if not we can keep moving on and if any questions pop up that's fine too have i ever done a five nights at freddy's no i actually haven't i am so i'm i'm a gamer but i'm not like the ps5 type gamer i'm the switch type gamer because i'm kind of old school like that so you know i am a big nerd when it comes to, you know, all sorts of stuff. So I do go to cons, I do cosplay, you know, steampunk, all the things. But I have not done a Five Nights at Freddy's. And I feel like I feel like I need to. I feel like I need to. It's been on my list, but I'm not familiar enough with it. So I don't want to like, hey, I'm going to do Five Nights at Freddy's. And people are like, oh my God, what do you like about it? And I'm like, N I don't know. I don't know what I like about it because I've never done anything with it. So... I try not to be a poser if I can help it. <laughs> but I will definitely look into it. Oh, what's a favorite or fun moment you've had so far as a drag artist? Oh, there have been so many. Honestly, doing drag story hours is one of my favorite things to do, especially when I get to do like the band book weeks, because I get to read some of the best stories. And I've been lucky enough to perform and headline at festivals like the Austin International Drag Festival, which is a fantastic way to meet other artists and really kind of network and really validating. Um, if anybody's in Texas, Austin International Drag Festival is actually happening in December. I was supposed to be there this year, but circumstances made it so I'm not able to be there. But I highly recommend going to check it out because there's drag artists from all over the place, all different styles. It's amazing. Did I teach myself to do makeup or did someone else teach me? I taught myself really. I, when I started, I didn't really have, I didn't have a drag family. So it was a lot of hit and miss. And then as I decided that I wanted to not, you know, stay stagnant, I would kind of look at other drag artists and see what they were doing and be like, oh, I kind of like that idea over here. Let me try this. Let me try this type of makeup. So it was, it's, it's still a lot of trial and error and I am by no means an expert, but I like being able to play with stuff and, you know, seeing what happens when, you know, I, I mix things and throw things on my face and see what sticks. That happens a lot too. <laughs> I highly recommend anybody that wants to try drag, do it. It's great. It's fun. You know, it's, it's not easy. But if, you know, if there's drag in your city, you can probably find open stages and stuff like that to, uh, to, to, to go to. And, you know, I think anybody should try it at least once. Why not? You know? So, all right. Are we ready for the second story? All right. Second story today is The Ghost Who Was Afraid of Everything by Nadia Ahmed. This one's super cute. I just read this one on Saturday and it's adorable. <clears throat> I apologize for the glare on the page. It's all right, we're fine. <laughs> Finn is scared to go out on ho for Halloween. 
humans are frightening. They make loud noises. They run from house to house. They shout, trick or treat! Ben is scared of a lot of things. Tree branches, butterflies, the color orange, and flying all frighten him. The color orange. I thought that was interesting. He doesn't know why he twists and knots about these things. His older brother and younger sister can do anything without worry. Come and join us, they shout from up high. But Finn looks down. Uh, he's like, no, thank you. I'm just going to stay right here. When Finn is afraid, his stomach swoops, his hands sweat, and he can't move. Finn hides in his attic. He feels lonely knowing everyone is having fun without him. I get that. Finn's family loves him for who he is. After every Halloween, they bring back candy for Finn to share. Except this Halloween. Finn's favorite chocolate bats are missing. His mother shakes her head. I'm sorry, they're all gone. Finn's siblings forgot to save him his favorite candy. How could they? This is the worst Halloween ever. Finn slumps. Look, I get it. I get it. If someone was supposed to save me something and they didn't, I'm, I'm, I'm bent about it. I'm mad. I'm so mad. My partner went to go get dumplings without me once and didn't bring me back any leftovers. I was very upset about this. Finn makes a promise to himself. Next Halloween, he will fly with his family and eat all the chocolate bats he wants. He will go even if he is still scared. He will face his fears. Finn starts small. A leafless tree is next to Finn's attic with branches sharp and pointy and rough. Finn doesn't allow his knocking knees to stop him. He touches the lowest branch. The bark feels rough, but there's no bite. Finn holds on for one whole minute. Sometimes a minute is all you need. Every day Finn touches the branches longer. Two minutes, five minutes, 10 whole minutes. His knees knock less. And one day he puts his arms around the tree. Thank you, he whispers to the tree, which gently waves down at him. Oh, see, good job, Finn. Look at him facing his fears. As snow falls, Finn climbs the branches and sits, watching his siblings soar above. He's up higher than ever, but not yet ready to fly. Warm breezes come and so do the butterflies. Finn takes deep breaths, and lets one flutter close to him until it lands on his head. When the sun blazes, Finn sits quietly next to a bowl of oranges. <laughs> and picturing you're trying to get over your fear of the color orange, you're just gonna sit next to a bowl of oranges because why not, right? That's how you do it. He doesn't hide in the attic as much as he used to. The leaves turn and Finn is ready to try the thing he is most scared of. Flying. Dun, dun, dun. He floats first near the attic window. Then he hovers near the tops of trees. And at last, Flynn flies so high that all the houses and trees look like toys. Good job. 
One day, flying on a breeze, is a kite Finn doesn't see. Oh. Ouch! Oh no, Finn got stuck in the kite. Oh. All Finn's fears rush back. He stays in the attic for the rest of the day. Maybe the outside world is just too dangerous. Poor Finn. But wait! Halloween is only one week away and Finn remembers why he started to face his fears in the first place. Chocolate bats! We need the chocolate bats! Finn doesn't want to miss out on his favorite candy. He doesn't want to miss more fun with his family either. Listen, I get the chocolate being the motivation. I, I feel that in my soul. He tries flying again. His knees shake, his palms sweat, but he lifts off. Yeah. He practices every day with one eye always watching out for any kites. And finally, look at him. Yay, good job, Finn. Finn goes out on Halloween with his family for the first time. And he gathers a large bag of chocolate bats all by himself, savoring each one. The end. So that's the one that had like, you know, the little the lesson there. Face, face your fears. It can take time. You don't have to do it all at once. You can tackle one and tackle another one and tackle another one. You know, but you can do it. You can do it. Even if you have a setback, you can still yeah, get out there. So. <laughs> a bowl of oranges is spooky. Yes, it can be. <laughs> <laughs> listen there are there are some interesting like irrational fears out there you know i get it i have an irrational fear of porta potties true story i am terrified of porta potties okay honestly that's so real it's so disgusting <laughs> <laughs> like i'm afraid that like either they're gonna tip over or i'm not gonna be able to get out or i'm gonna be stuck in this but like i have an irrational fear of porta potties i am i'm terrified <laughs> terrified I think everybody has at least one like irrational fear that like you're like this is dumb you know this is dumb this is the stupidest thing ever I'm afraid of the color orange you know and it's like you, but you're like I can't help it I'm scared of this thing right here and like there's you know but it's okay like I will still use a porta potty if I have to it just takes me a minute and I have to wait until the very last second otherwise I'm like oh. yeah there there are reasons there there are reasons so, any other questions? Any other anything? Also, if anybody else wants to, like, show me their costumes, I would love to see them. An irrational fear of inhaling a marshmallow. Hmm. I think that's a new one. I haven't, I don't think I've heard of that one. I don't think I've heard of that one. Scared of lizards. I have a friend who is deathly afraid of lizards which is unfortunate because I have a bearded dragon who sits right next to the couch. <laughs> so she has to come in and kind of sit and with like, she has to, uh, she can't look at the, she can't look at my, my beardy, which is, you know, it's, it, it's, it is what it is. He's, he's, which to be fair, he will judge you. He is probably the judgiest bearded dragon ever. He has great side eye, but he also has scoliosis. So <laughs> He came that way. <laughs> Your poor bearded dragon has scoliosis. He has scoliosis. So He's a rescue. All of my animals are rescues and they're all a little special. Like I have two pigs, they're rescues, and their brother and sister. And the brother is pretty deaf. I don't know that he's completely deaf. I think some of it's selective, but he's he's definitely hard of hearing. And so he, like, depends on his sister to let him know when it's time to come in or when I'm out there with treats because he doesn't always see me. If he sees me, he's all about it, but he doesn't always. So his sister has to nudge him a little bit. Oh, God, you saw a video of someone suffocating on a marshmallow as a kid. Okay. 
that I could see how that could that could trigger an irrational fear of marshmallows. I get it. But rabbits are judgy. 100 percent Rabbits are judgy. Which I seem to have a theme of rabbits. Watership Down is actually one of my favorite books ever. Ever. And those of us of a certain age will remember the original cartoon. I don't know. I think anybody over the age of like 30 or 35 would remember the original cartoon that was done for Watership Down, which is extraordinarily traumatizing. Netflix just did a new series, which is also traumatizing, but not quite as dark as the original. Uh, so speaking of those of us of a certain age being traumatized, so <laughs> anyone who is of my generation, and I guess I'm considered... I guess I'm a Gen, Gen X. I was born in 79, so I'm 45. I believe that. So you're 25, bless your heart. So anyone of a certain age from my generation, <laughs> we grew up reading the like scary stories to tell in the dark, like those anthologies, you know, and they're, they were great. I even remember borrowing from the library, uh, they had them on tape. Fantastic. Like I remember listening to them on road trips and my Walkman. So we grew up with with Alvin Schwartz <clears throat> as sort of our like, you know, he was our he was our go to horror dude when we were kids. And he wrote another anthology called In a Dark, Dark Room. And in this anthology is a specific story that I'm pretty sure traumatized every single person of my generation. <laughs> And when I started reading for Drag Story Hour, the very first Halloween Drag Story Hour that I did, I made a deal with, with our executive director out here in Arizona. And I said, okay, I will read whatever it is that you want me to read. However, I get to read The Green Ribbon because I feel like if our generation had to be traumatized by the Green Ribbon. I'm gonna pay it forward to all of today's youth because they also need to be traumatized by the Green Ribbon. So I try to make it a point to read it at least a couple times a season because it is still, I think, one of the like greatest scary like short stories I think that have, have ever been in, been done. I, I remember reading this when I was a kid and just being like, what? And I read it. Every time I read it, oh, see, there you go. Every time I read it, the parents, most of the parents in the in the audience, as soon as they know what I'm reading, they're like, oh my God. And the kids by the end of the story are like, <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's, a, it's a good one. And for those of you that are not familiar, you will be now, you're welcome. Consider it a rite of passage <laughs> passed down from, you know, my generation to yours. <laughs> there aren't a ton of pictures, but, you know. <clears throat> the Green Ribbon, written by Alvin Schwartz and illustrated by Dirk Zimmer. So Dirk Zimmer is not the dude that illustrated the scary stories to tell in the dark. I can't remember what his name is, but not that dude. But still, these illustrations with this story in particular, like, it's what we have in our heads. So. <clears throat> Once there was a girl named Jenny. She was like all the other girls, except for one thing. She always wore a green ribbon around her neck. There was a boy named Alfred in her class. Alfred liked Jenny. And Jenny liked Alfred. One day he asked her, why do you wear that green ribbon all the time? I cannot tell you, said Jenny. But Alfred kept asking, why do you wear it? And Jenny would say, it's not important. <laughs> Jenny and Alfred grew up and fell in love. As one does. One day, they got married. Mm -hmm. After their wedding, Alfred said, now that we're married, you must tell me about the green ribbon. You still must wait, said Jenny. 
I will tell you when the right time comes. Years passed. And Jenny grew old. And one day, Jenny became very sick. The doctor told her she was dying. Jenny called Alfred to her side. Alfred, she said, now I can tell you about the green ribbon. Untie it, and you will see why I could not tell you before. Slowly and carefully, Alfred untied the green ribbon, and Jenny's head fell off. Da, da, da. So you can see <laughs> why as a child reading this, we're like, oh, my God. So, you know, anytime we ever saw anybody with a scarf, it was like, what'll happen if we untie the scarf? Will the head fall off? So, you just... so yeah, that one, I, 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 I make it a point to try and read that one as often as I can during the season because it's still so good and it's still such a classic. <laughs> like, who wrote this to traumatize children? Hello? I, it's great. I mean, I I I imagine Alvin Schwartz reading, like writing it, was like. I mean, if you so so if you if you're familiar with the the scary stories to to tell to tell in the dark, right? So most of those are taken from sort of folklore. You know, there's like the the woman on the side of the road, high beams. You know, they're all taken from different sort of folklore and legends that you can find pretty much anywhere. I think these are more literally from his twisted brain a lot of it and <laughs> like these are they're they're these are all I think definitely on par with the scary stories to tell in the dark so if you do enjoy the scary stories to tell in the dark go and find in a dark dark room and other scary stories because it's still like it's still they're still just as good i think i think anyway but you know that's that's just me and goosebumps so <clears throat> rl stein when i was say tween young teen i never actually read the goosebump series i started reading some but i didn't like them as much i liked the fear street better than goosebumps and i actually like christopher pike better than rl stein i thought rl stein was fine but Christopher Pike, I'm like, oh, I, I like his stuff. And I every time I go to the thrift store, I go and try to find any either R.L. Stein or Christopher Pike, and nobody has them. Somebody is hoarding all of the Christopher Pike and R.L. Stein books, and I'm like, let me have them. Let me have them all. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. I can never find anything that I want. But if you've have you seen the Goosebump series now that they have released? I think is it on is it on Netflix? Or is it Max? I don't know. One of them. There's a new Goosebumps series out there. It's pretty decent. Pretty decent. I'm not mad at it. And the Fear Street series is pretty good too. So if you know, if if you like a little bit of nostalgia and you want to kind of tap back into it, I highly recommend, you know, checking those out. So we have a little bit of time. So I'm totally like happy to open it up. We can chat, have a discussion, if anybody has any more questions, burning things that they need to, you know, that they feel like they need to ask. I am, I am here. I am, you know, I'm here. Whatever, you know, y'all want to talk about, need to talk about, questions, anything, please ask away. What are all the names of all your rescued animals? <laughs> Get to the important stuff. Get to the important stuff. So my bearded dragon is where the nerdiness comes in a little bit. So my bearded dragon is named Odo. If you're a Trekkie, you'll know where that comes from. I have a, a beta who was also a rescue. His name is Solo. I have two dogs. The, I have a, a his, he's a brick with feet. He is a very large healer who really needs to be not so large. We're working on that. His name is Z. We just rescued a new puppy in August after I lost my old, old dog. And she is a shepherd mix. I think she's got some hound in her though. She looks like she's got some hound in her. Her name is Penny. The pigs are Linus and Lucy. <laughs> and the cats are Wick 
Phoebe, Jack, who is a girl, and Paisley. We have a lot of animals and teenagers. <laughs> What is my favorite thing about being a dragon? Oh, the book titles again. Yes, absolutely. Book titles. So I had The Ghost Who Was Afraid of Everything. I had I Just Ate My Friend, which was super cute. And then In a Dark, Dark Room and Other Scary Stories. All three very good, like, halloween -y kind of stories if you have like little ones. Am I going to a Halloween party? I am not because I am old and Halloween is on a weeknight. So <laughs> I did most of my Halloween stuff over the last weekend. So I'm probably going to go probably throw on like a costume, nothing crazy and go sit at my friend's house and hand out candy with her. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Nothing, you know, I'll probably be home by 10. <laughs> because that's, you know, I love the, the, the rescues. Rescues are Edgar Allan Poe. I love it. That's fantastic. I have, I would love a snake, but I can't handle feeding the snake. That is my biggest issue. I love snakes to death. My partner is terrified of snakes. She did get over it, but I can't handle feeding the snake. If I could find a snake that was a vegetarian <laughs> or would eat crickets, I'd be all about it. And just crickets. It wouldn't get big enough for me to like, I have, I, I struggle. I can't even get like the, the big hornworms for Odo. My partner will pick them up every once in a while for a treat. I can't actually get, cause I know what the hornworms turn into. So I can actually tried to rescue one once. Just, I have, I have issues. We don't, you know. what is my favorite thing about being a drag king? My, that's a good question. I'm a theater nerd. I've, I've been in, you know, doing theater for a very, very long time. And I actually stopped doing theater for a while because I hadn't started transitioning yet. And I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable enough in my skin to kind of audition for like the roles that I would, I really wanted to do. So I kind of tapped into drag as a way to kind of scratch that itch and for the last almost 20 years, it, it has. Um, I'm getting back into community theater. But I think one of my favorite things is I do get to bring that 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 drama that, you know, I'm known for being kind of a theatrical king. Uh, you know, my costumes are over the top. My makeup is, you know, like this is if I, oops, which side? There you go. If I cover this, this is like a very basic, like drag face for me like this is like just boy drag like you know but if I'm gonna go like do something like I want to do like I want the drama I want the 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 you know I, I, and I'm not much of an artist in terms of anything else like I'm really I can't draw I can't <laughs> you know so this is like this is a way for me to kind of express my artistic side so you know there's 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 that and I love that I get to use my drag to be a part of of the community and to educate I actually I have a weekly webcast that I've been doing now for over 10 years and we call it a a drag live stream but the only thing drag about it is the fact that we are in drag we don't really talk about drag we talk about current events we talk about things like sexual health we think we you know we, we talk about politics we talk about you know things that actually matter and the the way that I've been able to connect with my community over the years through drag is probably one of the best things ever. Like it's, it's been, that is probably one of the best things that has come out of me doing drag for like, you know, 20 odd years, almost 20 years. So yes, legless lizard. Wouldn't that be a snake? What is my advice for trans men when it comes to starting manhood? Okay. So when it comes to transitioning, one of my biggest things is don't compare your transition to anyone else's. That and the idea of passing is a societal concept and it's not real. If you, you know, when it comes to things like facial hair, body hair, masculine features, things like that, if you put a, a, a room and fill it with cisgender men, they're all going to look different. 
all of them are going to look different. You know, some cisgender men can't grow facial hair. Some will start losing their hair at 25. Some will have a full head of hair until they die. Some will, you know, so some gain muscle mass easy, some don't, you know, some naturally have more sort of feminine features. Some have that chiseled jawline. There is no such thing as like masculine. So when it comes to, you know, especially if you if you are starting hormones, if you are starting that medical transition, a lot of it has to do with genetics. A lot of it has to do with, you know, all, all of that. So if you are comparing your changes and your transition with somebody else, you will always feel less than because somebody will always have more facial hair than you. Somebody will, you know, always have more hair than you. Somebody will, will always be X, Y, Z more than you. And that's just the way it is. You know, you, you always have to make sure that you're happy with where you're at make sure that you are doing it the right way. Go and make sure you have a provider that you trust. Get your levels checked. And that goes for anybody. Don't try to, you know, self-medicate and adjust on your own. That is never a good idea because that can just mess you up like, you know, like crazy. Find a good support group if you need it. You know, there, there are resources all over the place that can you know, put you in touch with support groups in your area. But I mean, the biggest thing has to do with, with, you know, comparing yourself with other folks. Don't, don't do it, you know, and it's hard and I get it. Believe me, I get it. I've only been, this is year 10 for me transitioning. I didn't start transitioning until I was 35. So that was rough. I didn't get to experience, you know, my twenties as my authentic self. And I'm kind of mad about it, <laughs> but there are benefits, I think, also to me transitioning a little bit older. So, you know, it everything happens the way it happened. I finally last year had to say, well, and shave my head because I was not happy with the male pattern ball. I'm like, I'm done. We're just, we're getting rid of it. You know, so be the kind of man that you want to be. And that is the, the best advice I can give anybody is be the kind of man that you want to be. No one's transition is going to be the same as anybody else's. Is my drag live stream open to all? It it is. We actually it's called I'll put it in the in the chat. It's called Live with Fifi and Freddie. We we stream live Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. Arizona time. I think that's Pacific time right now. And Facebook, YouTube, Twitch and I think Instagram, but I'm not sure. Let me put that in the chat and you can find us on all of those from platforms and follow us like i said we talk about all sorts of stuff and because we're live we do have the audience that chimes in with chat which we're always happy to you know to, to we love the engagement that's why we do it live who advice for anyone having to temporarily tra detransition for safety That's a tough one. You know, first of all, I am heartbroken that anybody would need to do that. And I I, I get it. I 100% get it. I, I acknowledge that I have cis passing privilege and I'm able to, if I wanted to, I could live stealth. I choose not to because I try to use my privilege for good and I use it to educate. I actually do workshops on how to be a trans ally and, and things like that. Uh, so I I try to use my privilege for good and I recognize that not everybody is able to do that. Uh, so if someone is having to detransition because of their safety, that is absolutely heartbreaking to me. As far as advice, I I honestly... I think the, the best thing would be to find a good therapist because you will need support regardless of whether, you know, you have to, whether you've, you've, you're able to find a provider safely, you know, local that you can go see in person, something online. I'm sure that, you know, there would be resources to be able to connect you. But I think that, I think that finding a good support group, a therapist, or, you know, even a group would 
benefit you immensely because then at least you will have somebody to talk to and you know that you would not be alone. The Trevor Project, Trans Lifeline, all good resources, 100%. But, you know, if you or if someone that you know has to detransition because of it, I hope that that you know that there are resources out there for you and there are places that you can go, people that you can talk to and that you are not alone, even if you feel like that might be the case wherever you're at right now. There are people and places for you. And I hope that you're able to find them if that is the case, because that is absolutely heartbreaking to me. Three, <laughs> three years to grow a beard. I, I got lucky in that department as far as genetics. I, I have no problem with any of the body hair, just the hair on the top of my head. The rest of it, it all just migrated down this way. And, you know, I talk about you know, the idea of, of masculinity and things. And for me, my facial hair has nothing to do with masculinity. If I could get rid of it, I would. The problem is I'm a ginger and I have no contrast. If I, on the very rare occasion, I usually keep it trimmed a little bit shorter than this. I'm growing it out for a play that I'm actually in. So I'm growing it out till the end of December. But if I don't have any facial hair, I have I have so little contrast. I look like a naked mole rat. It is not cute. I, I just so my my facial hair is purely so I don't look like a naked mole rat. If I could like just shave it and be like, yeah, I'm fine with it. No, especially now that I have no hair on my head. Oh God, my eyebrows and my eyelashes are so blonde. They're like transparent. I literally, I have no contrast on my face. It's awful. So without the facial hair, it's not pretty. So the facial hair is, is there for, you know. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I appreciate you. So yeah, I guess we are we are winding down. Rai, do you have anything you wanna, you wanna close us out? Yeah, I can totally do that. Also just to like, kind of add on to what you're talking about for the person who is asking around detransitioning for safety. I just wanted to add in that like I think community is like the most important thing to kind of get somebody if that's you or if that's somebody that you know to get that person to kind of through those hard moments. Like if you can't afford a therapist, there's always online community. Online community is just as valid as in-person community. Yes. And you know there's places like Reddit, you know, there's like community events like this. Plume, we have like community support groups. And also there's like Discord channels and like Discord servers full of trans people all across the world, you know? Absolutely. And so like, and there's there's always going to be people who you can connect with and, and chat with. I can also just, I'm just going to send this Reddit page just for like, you know, just more resources. That's like a place I would see oftentimes people just like making posts around whenever they're feeling hard feelings and then people are there to <laughs> affirm you. You could also ask about like trans discord service too. Um, yeah, I just, I wanted to like add those things in because I think those things like, you know, I really want to hold as something that's really like sacred and it's really difficult. And like we, I want to see trans people be able to like, thrive and not have to like hide ourselves as a result of like safety so 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah but on a on a positive note thank you so much Betty, for just like everything love the stories love the energy as always thank you everybody here who dressed up and uh, are also showing up as your what are these avatars the the avatars. Avatars. I love the, the fox avatars. avatar yeah love the avatars thank you Arlo for avatars. joining They're as fantastic. a cow yes <laughs> I, 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 I figured I figured we should make a herd yes <laughs> oh I, I I love that the avatars are at the point where, like, if they're talking, like, the avatar is talking. If you have a camera and you use the avatar, it should also move with you. That's kind oh, of... I'm going to have to play with this now. But I or... don't have a camera to see if it actually works, but that's what I saw in the settings. But the I... fact that it's moving when you don't have a camera and it's just it's moving, moving based off of the audio is kind of... I think I I see the ear flick every now and yeah the ears the ears wiggle as well. That's fantastic! Oh my god! Yay technology! I like uh, I like the fox that's also with us right now. I like that they just stare like dead into the camera. It's just a dead. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah it's genuinely it's like oh if you showed up with a costume that's great if you don't have a costume you can throw on the avatar and that can right? be your costume you know <laughs> it's like we love accessibility <laughs> absolutely absolutely my cool. camera is oh. in the mail right now and it <laughs> didn't get here in time oh my god for the next drag story hour I, I had so much fun thank you so much for having me and you know thank you all for for joining i like i said these are these are like some of my favorite events to do so 